the corner, and you can see a dejected John Troxel right there, just not the way they wanted to finish this ball game. This we should make note that it was a very happy secondary for Colgate. They played a great second half. Their secondary coach is Doug McFadden, who spent many <laughs> years here as an assistant coach at Lafayette. Megan's trying to get uh, head coach John Troxel to chat. I'm sure he's not in the, the best of moods, as you can see right now. And they have to regroup. They're a team that is yeah. destined to win the Patriot League. They just have to win the next two ball games, yeah. and it's theirs. And they have to get healthy too, Gary. I yeah. mean, I think when Tang Tang went out of the game, that was big. And Lafayette, they're they're deep at a lot of positions, but they haven't had a lot of depth when it talk about playing time at the corner position. And I think that hurt them today a little bit. Um, they lose their and first. No Curtis, right? Right. No, they lose their first FCS football game yep. this year. Their only other loss had been the Duke. Right now, Marco Olivas is. Uh, I'm sure explaining uh, the mathematical situation to his football team as Marco uh, banged up himself with a bad knee. And yeah. Leopards uh, just have to know what's, what's there. The league championship is right there for the taking. It's going to require a couple of wins. Yeah. I mean, you look at the last couple games, Gary, that they've had. I mean, you know, you go back to Columbia, they gave up three. You go to Monmouth, 20. They gave up 22 to Bucknell, nine to Princeton. But lately, 28, 25, and 37 is the defense wearing down a little bit. Well, Megan has the head coach. Let's go listen. Thanks, Gary. Coach, your team was up 17-0 at the break. How do you describe what broke down in the second half? Yeah, just, you know, mistakes. I mean, we gave up 21 points there in the third quarter on short fields, you know I mean? Uh, obviously, we had a fumble right out of the gate. You know, gave them life, and and uh, you know that's where you want to go down the field and try and score and, and put the game away. And and then we had a uh, we had a fourth and one we didn't convert. We gave them a, a 60 yard field. And they went down and scored, and then we shanked a punt, and they got another one. So you know we didn't play our best football today. I mean that was really the reality. I mean to give them a ton of credit. I mean they they fought. You know, and I, I give our kids credit at the end. I mean we could have pulled the two and went down the field and scored in the fourth quarter to send it to overtime. Coach, you've talked to me throughout this season about the culture of your program. We just were able to hear a little bit from one of your leaders addressing the team, Marco. How much does a hearing an emotional speech like that from one of your leaders put trust in you that the team is going to reset going, going into next week? Yeah, I mean, we will. We will. I mean, we'll work them hard. I mean, our kids here have never quit ever, you know, in, in my time here. And, you know, it hurts, you know. I mean, it hurts because they work so hard, you know, and, uh, you know, and hopefully that'll make them rise up and get ready for next week. And, you know, we still control our own destiny, and we got we got to make the most of it. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Gary? All right, Megan, thank you very much. Uh, Mike and I are going to call it a day. Coming up, of course, is the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. A reminder, again, that we'll be right back here at Fisher Stadium next week for a 12:30 kickoff. Fordham comes to town, and... Mike, all of a sudden, that game takes on uh, super importance. Well, absolutely. You didn't think this was going to be a cakewalk to the finish here. All these teams come in, I know. I told you, with a target. you got a target, Lafayette. You're supposed to be the best. Well, you know, stand up and do it. And they didn't do it in the second half today. And I even questioned some of the play in the first half. They should have had a larger lead. They gave the football away. They were minus three in turnovers today. You cannot win a lot of ball games like that. And, uh, you know, sometimes a loss gets you out of the clouds and gets you back to reality and puts your feet back on the ground. And I think that's what Marco was telling the kids out there. This is a game they probably shouldn't have lost. They had a 17-0 lead. But if they want to get to where they want to go, these uh, this adversity has got to help them and pay dividends. Mike and I will see you next Saturday. We're going to throw it down to our team. Here's John, here's Phil, and here is Megan. Thanks so much, Gary. Well, John and Phil, I was just talking with Coach Trox post game, and, and he said it himself. He said, we didn't play our best football today. How do you assess what happened to Lafayette in the second half? Uh, a, a lot of uh, momentum shifts, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think we led in every statistical category, uh, but that's also in turnovers as well. And that's what really killed us. You know, came, came out, we were getting the ball in the second half, uh, turned the ball right over. And then, you know, they come out and they score on us. And it was just that momentum, couldn't get it back. You know, eventually they go up. We do have a nice drive to come back, take the lead. Uh, but uh, by that time, I think the defense was really tired. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Phil. I mean, that third quarter, you just felt it emotionally oh, yeah. and even physically. Um, you know, you also had the sense Colgate was the hunter today, and we were yeah. the hunted. Yeah. And it was almost too easy in that first half. 17 nothing came like that. But, man, you can't turn it over three times. John talked about the, the botched punt, um, the botched kickoff return. Lots of mistakes, uncharacteristic of this football team. And, Phil and Megan, you guys know, no, if anyone thought this was going to be easy, they were mistaken. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, we still control our own destiny. And could this team regroup? Sometimes uh, a little adversity isn't the worst thing in the world as long as you still control your own destiny at the end yeah and you have to think about it too lafayette right now is doing this with injuries key yeah. key injuries yeah. no jamar curtis today especially so let's kind of look at individual players a little bit how about troy w what did you what did you see from him today that you well, really liked well obviously a great job you yeah. know he came in you know and, and a little bit i mean i don't want to take anything away from those guys but yes. it's a little bit plug and play right you know you someone goes down it's next man up um, he's kind of the same type of back, uh, you know, that our others yeah. are. Uh, so he can come in. He did a great job. He had over 100 yards rushing. Um, I think, you know, really the key for me was while it's a great thing that we have a lot of freshmen in there for them to get some time, get some experience, you also get that you know lack of lack of playing time mm -hmm. and uh, some missed assignments uh sometimes that they just not think in the right way mm. lots of little things uh, obviously the turnover situation that uh, fumble uh from uh, from uh, uh young happened within the first couple of minutes of the second half and yeah. that really changed momentum but i want to point to two positives after the touchdown that put colgate ahead Conyers went crazy. I mean, he went up the yes. field like it wasn't Conyers. I'm sorry. Uh, up the field, Bruce. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bruce went up the field. They fed him the ball almost every single time. And then when Lafayette needed a big drive, 79 yards, engineered primarily by Dean DeNoble. So two plays, uh, two two sequences that I think this football team can still hang their hat on. Uh, but Phil, you're right. It's the little things, and sometimes there's no substitute for experience. That is so true. But also, when, when you kind of think of intangibles as well, Coach alluded to it a little bit post-game, but this team didn't give up on themselves. They stayed locked in. They fought till the very end, and that is something, especially when you've got some younger players. I think yeah. Coach was telling us pre-game, 12 freshmen. Yeah. We were going to see 12 freshmen yeah. playing. Yeah, yeah and, and I think... Uh, Again, that's something you can really hang your hat on. Mm -hmm. But John Troxell also talked to us during the week about finishing. Yes. having, And we heard it uh, from uh, Mike St. Germain on the sideline. We have to finish. After that tying touchdown drive, have to finish, have to finish. Yeah, they had their chances in overtime. They just couldn't uh, push it in from the five. That mm -hmm. was telling. Phil, how do you put this one behind you to get ready for, you know, like we're saying, control your own destiny. But this is an emotional one. This is one that's going to hurt. As a player, how do you put this one behind you and just get ready for Fordham next week? You know, you rely on your teammates, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you also, you know, you'll get that same commentary from, from your coaches, right? Yeah. You came back. You, you know, you, you had a couple great responses mm -hmm. to, to what, what Colgate did, and you hung in there, and, uh, you know, you were, you were close to winning this game, and you're, the destiny is still in your own hands. And John Troxell talked about, he's talked about all year long, about the leadership, about the culture change. Now it gets tested. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a little different when you're winning and you're on a six or seven game winning streak and everybody's singing your praises. Uh, that locker room, they have to circle the wagons and they got to look inside and uh, look for a good one next week against Fordham, I believe. Well, we will see what they're able to do next week against Fordham. That time for kickoff is 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. We can't wait to be back with you next week. From Phil Ang, John Leon, and myself, Megan Caffrey, we will see you next week.